32. We go to the number 5.84. So it's Kamma Mula. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the Vijnana Mulas, how they entrench the associating mentalities and following mentalities on particular objects and also on particular actions. So the person uh, is said to be uh, firmly established on certain objects and certain actions. Then we come into another types of mula, which is called kamma mula. It's actually it's it's, it's the uh, the second attribute we mentioned in the previous lecture, like making the mind to get established on certain actions. But since it has been detailed explained in many of the suttas, I thought of explaining it uh, again and also the difference of sadda with the, uh, uh, the, the influence of sadda and moha into our actions so kamma mula so both based, based on about two attributes the buddha in many suttas has delivered these six mulas are the root cause of wholesome and unwholesome acts you can see this in the akusala mula sutta in anguttara nikaya you can find this in akusala mula sutta in anguttara nikaya a3 it says uh, that most of all of the kusala and akusala kammas uh, spring forth from these mulas, wholesome mood roots and unwholesome roots. Uh, then, uh, <clears throat> on the other, uh, yeah, kusala, all sort of immoral deeds are begot by akusala mulas, and on the other hand, kusala mulas bring forth the entire range of wholesome acts. Then we talk about akusala mulas, loba dosa moha. So. Akusala Mula support the Akusala Acts. Supports the Akusala Act. Akusala Kamma. Right. So this happens in two ways. Incentives and while doing it. Incentive means the objectives, the, our wantings, right, as intensives. Uh, incentives, right? So it's like reasons for you to do Akusala, right? As a reasons. And also while doing the Akusala. So when we talk about Akusala Kammas, we have 10 full Akusala Kammas, you know already. Panadipata, Adinadana, Kamunichachara, Musawada. Visunavacha, Parusavacha, Sampapalapa, then Abhijja, Vyapada, and Michaditi. Right? So these 10 Akusala Khammas. So these Akusala Khammas, all of them can read. Uh, now we talk about Akusala Mulas, we have Loba, Dosa, and Moha. All three Mulas can be reasons for someone to initiate Akusala. Now for someone to initiate Akusala. For example, someone uh, uh, in ancient times who wants to become a king has to kill all the other uh, surrounding, uh, all the other challenges that he had. If you want to come into the power, you have to, uh, normally in, that is the rule. I'm not appreciating it, but normally it's, uh, they have to remove the uh, obstacles to come into the power. So. Why would they do Panadipata? What is the incentive? That is their attachment, craving for the crown, for the throne, for the power. So, Loba is a reason for Panadipata. Dosa, anger, because of mere anger, we kill someone. That is, Dosa begets Panadipata. Out of Moha, someone believes uh, by killing certain animals like cows, oxen, you can go near to the gods, right? Because of wrong view. But it's begot by Moha. So likewise, Loba, Dosa, Moha, all three Akusala Mulas can be reasons for someone to do all types of ten Akusalas. Can be reason for be all types of ten Akusalas. If someone asks, well, how, how Dosa or uh, how uh, Dosa become a reason for someone to hold uh, Michaditi, right? So we can say incentives and also reasons, like causes. Right? 
incentives is like the reasons you bring, right? Why it happens. But sometimes because of these reasons. For example, if you remember Sunak Katha, the Buddha's, one of the Buddha's attendants. He in the end gave up the sasana and he went to another doctrine and he held a very wrong view. So what was the initial reason for him to get upset with the Buddha? He, after coming to the sasana, he was a diligent practitioner and Buddha gave him instruction to develop Dipa Chakku. So he developed the Dipa Chakku and he could see the divine objects. But then, but he didn't have the divine ear, the basota. So he was seeing the divine experience, I mean the divine experiences, but he couldn't hear what they're talking. So it was like you put a, a movie is going on, the volume is muted. So he can experience uh, the divine world, but he cannot hear the sound. Then he had a desire to hear the sounds of the deity. Then he went to the Buddha and asked for instructions to give him to practice, develop the Dibba Sota, the divine ear. Buddha, the literature says, Buddha knew that he had no parami, he had no capacity developing past lives to develop the Dibba Sota, so Buddha didn't give instructions. So this, the Usunakkata had a, developed a grudge towards the Buddha. He thought, Buddha is afraid that I would also become like him, so he is not giving me the instructions. This was the initial anger that got developed later on. And he insulted the Buddha in many times. He started to uh, bring a dis, uh, uh, how to say, uh, accusation to the Buddha. He tried to de destroy the reputation of the Buddha. In the end, he gave up the sasana. He went away from the monkhood and obtained a wrong doctrine. So likewise, even dosa can be a reason for someone to fall into Michaditi. So that's why I say all three mulas are reasons for causes for all types of Apusalas to happen. Then while we are doing the Apusala, at the moment of doing the Apusala, there is a specific uh, uh, way of saying it. We don't say all Apusalas are done with all the mulas. So there is a specific kind of categorization. So if you go to the page number 69, you can find a list of Apusala Kamas. So in the 85.1, Kame Sumicha Achara, Abhijja and Micha Diti. Abhijja is wishing for other things to become yours. Or always rooted in Loba and Moha, because they are done with Loba Mula Chitta. Are rooted with Loba and Moha. Two Mulas appear in those Chitta. Panati Pata, Parusa Vacha and Vyapada are always rooted in Dosa and Moha. So killing uh, harsh words and Anger, strong anger of wishing others destruction is done by it's rooted in dosa and moha. Adina dana, stealing, musavada, lying, pisuna vacha, slandering, pampa palapa, vain talk are sometimes rooted in loba and moha. You can do it with loba chitta. Sometimes in dosa and moha, you can do it with dosa chitta, and sometimes only in moha. Sometimes even in only in moha, momula chitta also, you can do this. Part. This is the underlying philosophy for the Buddha to mention in the Akusala Mula Sutta that these three unwholesome roots are rudimentary reasons for all types of Akusalas to occur. There are two reasons, causes for incentives or causes for Akusala and also while doing Akusala, they support the karma. It can be before or while doing. So these three are the reasons, main reasons for a person to perform Akusala karma. Attachment, dislike or anger, not liking an object or delusion about certain objects. Then we come into Kusala Kamma Mulas. Kusala Kamma Mulas is a three in Sutta V, no Aloba, Adosa and Moha. and incentives and also while doing. So in Kusala Kamas normally we have two types of Kusala Kamas when we say. Kamas, another first type of Kusala Kama is restraining from Kusala. This is mainly Sila, mostly Sila, right? And also we can call more than Sila like uh, 
which are the samadhiti and so forth, but mostly when we say restraining these from Kapusara. See that most. They're doing good deeds. So restraining from Akusala. And also we can there is another way of approach, approach of saying, I'm I'm expecting to talk this in Kama lesson. When you are doing a Kusala deed, always there is a restraining from Akusala. There is an ultimate way of explaining it. You get restrained from Akusalas and also you develop the wholesome quality. There are two ways: Pahana and Bhavana. So in the Buddha's teachings, the most emphasis is given for restraining from Akusalas. It's not only for Sila I'm talking. When you, restrain, when you do Kusala Kamma, at that moment you restrain from Akusala. For example, when you are giving Dana, you restrain from Loba. So likewise, uh, both sides are possible when you are talking about a wholesome deed. So now if you see in the diagram, these Kusala Molas become a reason for you to restrain from Akusala, for reason to do Akusala. These same Kusala Molas, while doing, they become roots in restraining and also doing it. But when it comes to the Kusala side, the Kusala side, if you remember the reasons, all the three Molas can be reasons for all the Akusalas. And then we had, while doing, there was a ex, uh, very specific definition. Panadipata is only done by Dosa and Moha. Kamisumichachara by Loba and Moha. It is never done with Dosa. So likewise, at, at the while we are doing, while doing, so then, uh, but if, when it comes to Kusala side, causes and while doing, in both the occasions, you may find all the Kusala Mula sometimes. So there is no such a specific definition. Like, this Kusala has to done, be done with this Kusala Mula. No, it's not like that. Because Aloba Adosa is found in all the Kusala Chittas, right? Amoha in Chittas with wisdom. Right. So uh, then, uh, if you read that uh, topic, on the wholesome side, wisdom about or understanding the ill results of immoral acts and benefits of moral acts will naturally drive the person to restrain from immoral acts and to do wholesome deeds. When detachment and loving kindness also become more stable in the mind, person restrains immo from immoral deeds and perform good deeds more firmly. So. When we have an understanding about the consequences of good and bad, we tend to do it. Sadha is also a very important reason. I'll come to that point after explaining this. But when you have aloba and adosa strongly in your mind, then we tend to perform these good deeds more firmly. The same to, the same to be said with regard to wholesome roads, which are present by restraining bad deeds and performing good deeds. So I was talking about the reasons. The causes for doing good and why doing good. So aloba dosa moha can be causes and also while doing good things, remove roots while doing good things, irrespectively. Like if they, you don't need to, uh, uh, sorry, uh, without any any specific specifically, right? In while uh, restraining or while uh, doing good as reason of uh, roots while uh, performing. In both the cases, three roots can perform their functions. If I talk the 86.1, in restraining from evil deeds. Normally while restraining immoral deeds, all the three wholesome rules, aloba, adosa, and moha, is their own. For instance, one may restrain from panadipata out of loving kindness and compassion towards beings. Another may restrain from earning easy money by slaughtering animals due to non-craving towards money. So he give up the attachment towards money and then he may give up the non uh, killing. Then sometimes someone else may restrain from Panadipata seeing his ill results because of wisdom into both the killer and the being who is being slaughtered or killed. So in performing good deeds, as stated above, three wholesome roots are supportive to the performance of all sorts of good deeds. However, explanations pertaining to the literature mentioned about the prominent root, not necessarily prominent roots within the threefold good acts as follows. So the commentaries explain, and I think in suttas also we find information, that what are the prominent rules in dana, sila, and bhavana. Dana, obvious, is aloba, right? Non-attachment is the most significant. Sila. Sila is mainly due to adosa. Specifically, you observe sila, because if you break, do immoral deeds, this is not going to harm yourself only. It's going to harm others. So therefore, Buddha mentions, when you have adosa, 
when you have compassion towards others, when you have loving kindness towards others, that is the reason for you to observe sila and uh, restrain from immoral deeds which would harm others. Then when you come to bhavana on the next page, mostly bhavana is mentioned, uh, generally it is mentioned because of amoha, but when you go into bhavana, specific bhavanas, you find some bhavanas are supported by certain rules and they play the significant uh, role. For instance, if I read from the third, para, third line, for instance, aloba seems to be the, seems to be more powerful in 10 asuba meditation subjects than kaya gata sati, like 32 body parts. Ahara particularly sanya also enhances the level of aloba greatly, repulsiveness of food. Contemplating the metta bhavana in metta, adosa plays the most significant role. Moreover, karuna bhavana and mudita bhavana too needs the assistance of adosa greatly. When it comes to upekha bhavana, all the three roots, aloba by not being affectionate towards beings, adosa by not disliking beings, and amoha by observing the role of kama in lives of beings, support to gain higher economy in upekha. So, in upekha bhavana, you should have all three roots adosa, amoha, and aloba. Then, in meditation subjects such as dhatu manasikara, four, four elements, ahare patikula sanya, that is because it needs lots of uh, contemplation. Upasamana sati and marana sati, significance of panna, uh, panna has been mentioned in Visuddhi Magga. Visuddhi Magga says these are for the buddhi charitas. Moreover, amoha is inevitable in meditation contemplations of buddha anusati, dhamma anusati, sangha anusati, sila anusati, chaga anusati and devata anusati. Since one needs the support of wisdom faculty to understand the attributes contemplated in these subjects. Sadha is suited to a person with sadha, but you have to have the wisdom faculty to understand the attributes of Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, Sila, Chaga and uh, Devata. In Vipassana meditation, Amoha plays the most significant role. So these are very clear. Then, so these are the roots of uh, Kusala and Akusala Kama. Then the question may come, what is the role played by sadha? This is another point. Now we were telling these are the roots, mula, reasons which makes the mind to be well established on the kammas. Buddha mentions in Apusala Mula Sutta all the Apusalas, right? As I remember, all the Apusalas come out, come from, from these uh, Apusala days. And also, if you have de detachment, if you have uh, non hatred, and if you have wisdom, that is the reason for good, for good, good deeds to be done. So now, a question may, uh, someone may ask the question. What is the role played by Sadha? Sadha. If you remember in the lesson, lecture we gave about Sadha, we mentioned Sadha is like a hand. Sadha hand to take the valuable things. Because of Sadha, you have the belief of good results, good deeds will give you good results. So you do things and you obtain pleasures in the samsara. Sadha is like a seed which gives crops. And Sadha is like a uh, wealth by which you can buy valuable things. So, by because of sadha, you do good things and you obtain pleasures in sansa. So, sadha also gives you the drive to do good deeds, to make the good deeds. So, then, uh, yeah, we'll read the paragraph first. One may wonder, then what is the role played by sadha in performing good deeds? As mentioned above, faith or belief that good actions will bring beneficial results is, is like the main reason for someone to be interested in going, doing good deeds. That is true, but such an urge become more stable and firm only when it is backed by wisdom. So when the sadha is backed by wisdom, it becomes a very stable type of sadha. Function of mula is to make the mind be more entrenched in object, it cognizes and actions it performs. Therefore, sadha is one of the main reasons for someone to initiate the performance and perform kusala, but it is not a mula. Because functioning of mula is to make your mind well established on certain deeds. So, and also you may have sadha faith. That faith, with that faith, why we tend to perform again and again good deeds? Because when we have detachment and we have non-hatred and we have good understanding. That is why some teachers say, when you talk about the ten perfections, parami. If you remember the ten paramis, dana, sila, nekamma, panya, diriya, khanti, satcha, aditana, metta, and upekka. Dana is charity, 
Mechamized renunciation. Uh, uh, Sila is virtue. Nekamma is renunciation. Dana, charity. Sila is virtue. Nekamma is renunciation. Then Panya is wisdom. Virya is effort. Kanti is tolerance. Tolerating pain and others' accusations and so forth. Then Kanti Satcha is truthfulness. Truthfulness is twofold. You speak the truth and you keep the promises. That's the difference of Sila and Satcha. If you speak the truth, it becomes a Sila. The special significance of Satcha Parami, you make a promise, you don't break it. It's a very difficult thing. Another aspect of Satcha Parami, if you look into the Charya Pitaka, Buddha used, Bodhisattva used to serve others by doing determinations of his true attributes. Like, I have protected Sila for such a long time, and by this uh, truth of this nature, may this. Uh, uh, this, these things happen. He has supported others. Sometimes even uh, not admirable qualities he has made the, such a career. So these are the three facts. Such a, such a parami is threefold. Speaking the truth, keeping the promises and sub helping the others by the power of your uh, speaking out or determining based on the truth, uh, actuality, factness of your uh, certain attributes. Then such a aditana determination, mitta is loving kindness, and Upekha is uh, not attaching or di uh, disliking objects. It's not Brahma Vihara. It's not contemplating the beings are because uh, they have uh, results of Kama. It's like not attaching or disliking objects, even uh, beings and also inanimate things. So, out of these 10 paramis, some shadows say Dana is the most fundamental. More the stronger your dana is. Dana is aloba, giving up, right? In other words, give, letting go, giving up. More the dana is powerful, the remaining paramis will also be powerful. For example, so I'm related to the uh, mulas because when even the sadda, even someone has sadda, one become more established on the wholesome deeds when detachment, non hatred, and non delusion understanding is there. For example, Someone, for if you think if you can give dana like uh, 1000 chats or 10,000 chats, right? Someone can give up 1000 chats, but he cannot give, ten, cannot give up 10,000 chats. He, he, his loba is strong. Someone may be able to give, uh, give up 10,000 chats. This also depends on your how much the portion you have. Like, think about that both the people have similar wealth. So, out of that, someone wants to give 1000, someone can give 10,000. So the one who can give up 10,000, his aloba is stronger, that's obvious. So now when you come to the sila, protecting the sila, sila is now you observe it, you are not going to have it uh, uh, like a, you are not going to in a, in a rose bed like always. There are opportunities, situations that you sometimes need to break the sila and you have to make sacrifices to keep it, right? That is the moment that your strength of your sila is tested. So now think. Now someone is going to, the both of the people are going to ex experience a certain loss. He has to say a lie to save 5,000 chats, for example. So the person who could give up 1,000 but couldn't give up more than that, there is a very high tendency that this person, this person may not lie to save 500 chats, he may not lie to save 1,000 chats. But he, there is a high possibility that he may lie to give up, to, to protect 5,000 5, uh, 5, chats. He may, because he cannot give up 5,000. His aloba is only strong enough to give up 1,000. So more your aloba, the more strength of your sila, nekamma, panya, others are decided. So if the person who can give up 10,000 chats can easily keep his sila even at the loss of 5,000. So likewise, aloba or dana is the most fundamental quality in all the paramis. More you can give up, more you can fulfill paramis very strongly. Someone is attached to the family, attached to the beloved ones. So you cannot give up the household life and go into the uh, forests. So if the aloba is not strong enough to give up the household life, he cannot make the renunciation and practice the nikamma parami in a higher level. Someone is attached to his family, his beloved ones. He cannot take away times from his beloved ones to go and study the true doctrine. 
right? So this aloba giving up affects all paramis. So therefore, attachment is like a root. Detachment is like a root for all the wholesome deeds. More you have detachment, more your uh, uh, wholesome deeds will be done more perfectly. More you have non uh, non hatred, more you can practice uh, wholesome deeds. In uh, and this detachment plays a huge role, more than uh, non hatred, and all are governed also by understanding. More you understand, more you can give up. Right. So therefore, sadha is not a root. Sadha is the initial reason, but sadha only is not. Sadha becomes stronger. And you are because of wisdom, and based on sadha, you do wholesome deeds repeatedly and strongly. Then you have detachment and non hatred and non delusion. So, mula functioning of making the mind to be well established on certain actions is based on mula. Is not based on sadha. Sadha is the initial reason, but you become more entrenched on these wholesome deeds when. Aloba, adosa, amoha are present. So that is why Buddha didn't define sadha as a mula, but aloba, adosa, amoha as a root. Then, how about the good deeds done by people who does not possess any faith in karma and its result? Then a question may come. If I explain sadha as just as believing karma and result, it's a very important reason for someone to do kusala. Then a question may arise: How about the person who doesn't have faith in karma vipad? Can't they do good things, good kusalas? Yes, they do. They they do good kusal. At that time, is there any sadha? Yes, there is sadha. So, what sort of sadha is this? Sadha have two functions. The most prominent function in Buddhism we explain is believing the true phenomenon of the nature, true attributes of the phenomenon. But the second type of the most fundamental type, most fundamental type attribute of sadha is the purity of the mind. We call it pasada sadha. I, I couldn't bold it actually. Please underline that. Third line, second paragraph, italics, pasada sadha. Third, second paragraph, third line, italics words, pasada sadha. I have given it in the footnote. Third line, second paragraph, italics, pasada sadha. So this sadha is the sadha which purifies the mind. It removes the defilements from of our mind. The example is given is like the gem, the manikya uh, manikatana of a chakravarti, universal monarch. As the Buddha explains, when a, uh, when, when the chakravarti, universal monarch is crossing a muddy uh, muddy pit or, or water pit, he asks the he, when he says it's thirsty, so a person goes and put this gem into this water pit. So as soon as it is put the water, the muddy particles go down and the water becomes very clear the king can start to drink water so sadha is like that when the sadha arises this sadha is not believing it's just the purification of the mind so where can we find the reference to this sadha you can find this reference in the patisamvida manga commentary especially when you are doing i have given it in the footnotes in the paragraph when you are doing the vipassana meditation at a level which is called Udaya Bhayanyana, you are going to have a very strong Adhimokha we call a Sadda. That Sadda is the purified nature of the Vipassana Chitta, clarity of the Vipassana Chitta. It is not the faith on Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. So actually the real beliefs, the fundamental reason for this belief even is the clarity of the mind. Why is that? So when the mind is clear, it allows the profound phenomenon which are beyond our experience. It accepts this phenomenon to come into the mind. The example is given, when uh, water is pure, it allows the shadows of the surrounding objects to be uh, reflected on its surface. So likewise, when the mind is pure, even without greater understanding, it allows the profound phenomenon to uh, enter into the mind with accepting this. It's accepting. I mentioned when we come into Sadha, Sadha, when we explain the Sadha, we come into a, a stance, we cannot explain Sadha in objective stance, we come into a stance that what the Buddha have mentioned is correct. So when you want to explain Sadha, we first say, there is a phenomenon called rebirth, 
There is a phenomenon called Kamman in these results. There are two attributes called the Buddha of Buddha Dhamma and Sangha. So they do exist in the nature. This is our first definition. Then we explain, even without knowing them thoroughly, if someone accepts them, if someone believes them, we call it Sadda. It may be uh, uh, firm or not firm. That is a different case. It's the example is like that. I gave you the example. Now this is covered. This wall is covered. So I hit to this curtain. Some, may, some person may know there is a wall. Some person may not know there is a wall. But both of us, when we hit, both the hands will be stuck in the wall. Our understanding is not going to affect. So likewise, if someone believes a profound phenomenon which truly exists in the world, in Buddhist perspective, we call it sadha. If someone denies this profound phenomenon with understanding or without understanding, this we call a wrong view. That's why I say we have to, you, you have to come into a stance that what the Buddhism explains is true and based on that you have to explain. Otherwise Sadha can never be explained in detail. Because objectively if you start to observe, for example, create God creation. We have to give half percent to the 50 percent of the God creation and non 50 percent of the non great creation. And we start to observe. So then we have a question, uh, Sadda, someone has Sadda towards the creation of God, someone has Sadda towards the command Vipaka. So we, we cannot distinguish what is correct and wrong. So in terms of to explain the uh, mechanism of Sadda in Buddhist perspective, we have to come into the stance that these are true phenomena, then if someone, whether understanding or not, because when you explain Panya, there is a path to show, to, to understand this phenomenon. But when it comes to Sadda, we say believing. So the, come, one can ask a very logical question. Someone believes in God, someone believes in Buddha. So what is the difference? In? So the explanation given in Buddhism is these are phenomena are true. That is the first definition. Then if the mind believes them, mind accepts them, then regardless of your understanding, if it is a true phenomenon, so that's why the example is given. Whether you know or not, if you hit the curtain, if there is a wall, your hand will stuck on the wall. So likewise, whether he understands or not, if it is a true phenomenon, if it accepts the thing, it means we call it sadha, and it is only possible when the mind is pure from the defilements. So this purity or clarity of the mind is called the sadha. That clarity is the fundamental attribute of sadha to make us believe, believe the profound phenomenon such as Kamma and Vipaka, attributes of the Buddha. Next life, dependent origination, these ones. So these 12 ones, I think I mentioned this once. I would like to say it again, because we are talking a bit about Sadha. Like, for example, attributes of the Buddha, attributes of Dhamma, attributes of Sangha. Then Sikha, Sikha means the validity, whether this practice will lead to a proper uh, result or not. Then, uh, uh, previous life, previous and following lives, or rebirth we can call, rebirth. Kamma and Vipaka, dependent origination. When we say dependent, Origination, it includes rebirth, Kopa and Paka because causality. So, in these profound natures, sometimes you can include Dukkha, Samudaya, Niroda, such like Nibbana, and also. So, it is this is a this uh, list becomes normally 12. So, in these profound phenomena, which are beyond normal human observation, ordinary human observation, they are beyond the ordinary human observation. If the mind starts to believe them, we call it Sadda. Oh, sorry. If the, if the mind starts to, doesn't understand this phenomenon clearly, we call it moha. If the mind starts to doubt, we call it ichikicca. If mind starts to come to wrong conclusions about them, we call it titi. If the mind starts to believe them, we call sadha. If mind starts to penetrate and understand them clearly, we call it panya. So these are the profound phenomena that which are beyond human, ordinary human observation. So that's why Sadha and Panya becomes faculty Indriya. Without the support of Sadha, 
one cannot accept them. Without the support of wisdom, you cannot understand them thoroughly. So, Sadda, in that sense, we in Buddhism, we mostly talk about Sadda in this sense. But what is the fundamental characteristics of Sadda? Even for this to happen, that is the clarity. It makes the mind clear, giving up the defilements. This is called Pasada Sadda. Pasada Sadda, Pasada Sadda have two explanations. That is, I have given in the footnotes because that is uh, in the Sadha lecture I explained about only about one characteristic. Now this second characteristic is whether someone has the understanding about the profound phenomenon or not. The clarity of the mind which removes it from defilement is called Pasada Sadha. So for example, someone doesn't have any belief on Kama and Vipaka. He is a sick person. He gets the compassion to help him. So, his mind, even though he has no belief in Kama and Vipaka, he still say he helped him out of Kusala Chitta. Out of Kusala Chitta. So, what was the main reason for this Kusala Chitta? His mind became clear because of many reasons. can be a few reasons. His mind became pure. So, the compassion, this purity, clarity, facilitates the arising of Adosa, loving kindness, arising of compassion, arising of wholesome intention, Rising of wholesome zeal. So these good qualities were facilitated by this purity of the mind. Sadha is the most fundamental reason for Kusala. Sadha is the most fundamental reason for Kusala. Then why is that a Mula? For it to become entrenched. Mula means making the mind well entrenched upon good certain actions or objects. So it's the initial stage is Sadha. For it to become well entrenched, you have to develop into wisdom. Buddha mentioned in, I give the reference in the in that lecture, uh, in the Sadda lecture, he mentioned, I cannot recall the Sutta's name, sorry for that. Buddha mentions, if you want to have unstable uh, faith upon me, what do you have to follow? This is not talking about Sota Panahu. Even for a Putujana, if you want to have a stable faith on me, monks, investigate me as much as possible. So when you investigate him, then Buddha said you will find that this person has surely has no raga, dosa, moha, and you will have a faith that is unshakable by even by Mara. So Sadha becomes stable, entrenched when you have wisdom. And this the action, the whole you will be doing wholesome actions more and more with Sadha when you have detachment and when you have non-hatred. So, Sadha is not a Mula, Sadha is the initial reason for all the wholesome deeds, but they become more stable when you have these Aloba, Adosa and Amoha. So that is what I mentioned in this paragraph. Even for the person who doesn't have the belief in Kama and Vipaka, when he develops, for the per person who helped the sick man in the simile, when he has more detachment, more loving kindness, uh, so loving kind, uh, compassion is outcome of loving kindness and aloba. So because uh, you want to support him with, uh, as a result of loving kindness and you don't like his suffering, that is aloba. So there are outcomes of aloba and uh, related to aloba and aloba. So these good qualities become well established when he has more strong loving kindness and also detachment and understanding. So likewise, uh, Aloba Adosa Amoha makes the wholesome deeds more stronger. So if, uh, page number 71, 71, the second paragraph. With the above explanation, we come into the following conclusion. Delusion, craving and hatred are the most significant natures in the sphere of wholesomeness, unwholesomeness. Whereas detachment, non-hatred and non-delusion or wisdom are the giants of wholesome. Giants means which makes you more powerful. Maybe it's not a good word to use. But anyway, I, my, uh, my intention was to show they are the real um, qualities which make our spiritual practice more stronger and stable. Then we come to another point called Sadda. So I'm going to Moha and Sadda. Relation with Sobana 
Akusala, Sobana, and Kusala. Right? I think most of you know these differences as students who have studied Abhidhamma. Like, uh, you know, uh, there are Akusala Chittas, Sobana Chittas, right? Sobana Chittas include Vipaka, Kusala, and Kiriya. All, not all Sobana are Kusala. If you remember, not all Sobana are Kusala. If I remember, because there are some big, uh, students who are studying in diploma. For example, 24 Kama Sobana Chitta. This is threefold. Maha Kusala, Maha Vipaka, Maha Kiri. So Sobana doesn't mean Kusala. So we have to use them very carefully. So when I say Sobana, it refers to the entire range of beautiful consciousness. Transmission is beautiful consciousness. Kusala is wholesome. Attribute of Kusala, characteristic of Kusala is will, it will give good results in future. It is not that all Sobana is going to give result. Kiriya Sobana, Vipaka Sobana is not going to give result. Only Kusala Sobana is going to give result. Akusala is going to be bad result. Right? So now we are talking about Moha Sadda, relationship of Akusala, Sobana and Kusala. So this is based on Lady Sado's brief explanation. I accepted it. This is the explanation. Uh, most of the part is what I consider in my perspective. But the initial uh, explanation was given by Lady Seattle. So according to him, so what he suggests, which is a very logical explanation. So we'll first find out what he says. Moha. Moha is the ignorance of realities. Moha is the ignorance of realities. This Moha is fundamentally an Akusala nature. So the simile he gives, the darkness in the world. You don't need to cause for darkness. When there is absence of light, there is darkness by nature. When there is no light, darkness will happen naturally. So likewise, the ignorance, which is the deluding nature of realities, ignorance about realities, you don't need any other supporting factor for it to become Akusala. It by nature is an Akusala. That is how we understand. It's, uh, it's just a statement. It's not an explanation. So Moha by nature is an Akusala. You don't need any other supporting factor to make it Akusala. So this is what he says. So what I also added as he is, Sadda, the purity of the mind, is not necessary. The purity of mind is also by nature is a beautiful state. You don't need any other uh, supporting factor, the Sadda. I'm talking about not belief. I'm talking about the purity of the mind, the initial quality. This purity of the mind is by nature a Sobana mentality. Sobana means a beautiful state. So this is the main reason that we call Kanha and Sukha. Kanha means the dark. Sukha is white. Right? Kanha and Sukha. This comes from Krishna in Sanskrit. Krishna is dark. Dark blue, dark black. Krishna has become Kanha. So Kanha is dark, so it represents the bad attributes. Sukha is purity, white color. So it represents good quality. Buddha mentioned Kanha Sukha Dhamma. Kanha is bad quality, Sukha is pure quality. The most fundamental Sukha quality is Sadha, purity of the mind. Then the most fundamental Kanha quality is the ignorance, Moha, because it understands it facilitates for all the wrong understandings, all the wrong behaviors. So, so the explanation is there is no necessity of a, da, another faculty, another reality to make moha, akusala, or sabda, sobana, not kusala, sobana. Sobana means beautiful mental state. Then, now when this moha and sabda is found, there are some, we are talking about, now we talked about many chetasikas. If you find, if you are, if you are aware, you find some similarities in both the wholesome and unwholesome side, Sobana and Akusala side, some similarities. Now we are going to say these similarities, similar, similar attributes, are the fundamental and fundamental mental qualities. Fundamental mental qualities. What is this? What are they? Uh, if you go to the uh, second, there is a fundamental mental quality called desire. Don't misunderstand this, this attachment. Desire means a want to do, desire, icha. When this desire is connected with moha, desire is connected with ignorance, it turns into be loba. 
When this desire is connected with the purity of the mind, Sadda, it turns to be Kusala Chanda or Dhamma Chanda. So I there, there is a fundamental quality called Akanti, non-tolerance, non-tolerating. So when it is connected with Moha, this non-tolerance uh, manifests as Dosa. When this non-tolerance is connected with purity, it manifests as Aloba, rejecting the unwholesome states, Nadi Vasinti Pajahat. And also, it also can manifest, manifest as Ahirika, not accepting the disgusting, unwholesome natures. Now, this is what the Riyadi Sayadu has mentioned. So, I add more. The fundamental mental quality called, uh, uh, there's a fundamental mental called Kanti. Kanti means tolerance, accepting. So, when this Kanti is connected with Moha, it comes as he, Ahirika, Ahirika accepting the disgusting uh, mental states. So when it is connected with purity, it manifests as Adosa, non tolerating, tolerating the suffering. It, it becomes Adosa. In the I have to make a correction, the non tolerance, when it is connected with Sadda, it becomes Hiri, not Ahirika, it becomes Hiri. Then uh, there is a basic mental quality called fright. Fright is a mental quality. When it is connected with moha, it manifests as the real fear, dosa fear. Dosa has an attribute called fear. When it is connected with purity, it becomes ottapa. It frightens the frightful akusala natures. There is a deep understanding, advanced understanding, a fundamental quality. When it is connected with moha, what do you think? It becomes ditti, moha and loba. So that's why a person with a wrong view, you understand him as an intelligent person. It, when it, it goes into the object, it thoughts, thinks about the object in various ways. A ditti, a person who is a strong ditti, you cannot convince him easily because he have reasons for that thing. So this understand deep penetration or investigation or deep penetration, when it is connected with moha, it becomes ditti. When it is connected with sadda, the purity of the mind, it becomes wisdom panya. Then there is a quality called inactivity. This inactivity, when it is connected with moha, what do you think? It becomes tina and midda, the weakness of the mind. But when it is connected with the sadda, it becomes tatra manjatata. Tatra manjatata is explained in tikas as udasina bhav. Udasina Bhava means it doesn't go into any extremes. It is a one don't it doesn't mean that the Kusala Chitta is lazy, don't misunderstand that. This Kusala Chitta means uh, this inactivity means it doesn't let the wholesome mind to fall into extremes. If you remember how we explain Tatra Majatata, Tatra Majatata means Atta is a nature, Majatta means it doesn't fall into extreme. What are the extremes? Extreme joy or extreme ghostness. Uh, costness, extreme uh, or otherwise uh, laziness or agitated nature. So for a mind to become wholesome, it has to be in this central nature, right? Without going into these extreme means, without going into these extremes, it has to be, so it's called Majje. So this attribute is considered as a certain kind of inactivity. So this inactivity manifests as the Tatra Majjata. So in this manner, Moha and Sadda are the main two causes for mentalities to become Akusala and Sobana. Moha is the reason for mentalities to become Akusala. Sadda is the reason for mentalities to become Sobana. It should also be noted that Sati, which is the force that prevents the mind stream from going away into the unwholesomeness, is also a fundamental mental attribute, which is Sobana. The support of Sati is necessary even for the clarity called Sadda to arise. Because the mind is, as we explained, is naturally dragged through the Akusala side. It has to be kept in the Akusala side very strongly that for that Sati is necessary. Sati we explain not as the present moment awareness. Sati is the force which makes the mind to be in the wholesome side. It doesn't let the mind to go into the out wholesome side. It keeps the mind in the wholesome side. It is like a force. This force is also necessary even for the Sadda to arise. Then when it comes to the firm establishment of these good deeds, good and bad qualities, roots play the most significant role. So it means moha and loba entrench the wrong view and conceit firmly in the mind. How it happens? When someone appreciates self more 
and considers in wrong means, his wrong view becomes strengthened. So if you remember from our childhood, how do we did, how did we develop this ego? From the, in the childhood, we didn't, we didn't have any much consideration of us. But our parents used to say, I'm not uh, uh, complaining to parents, parents used to say, you are very nice, you, this is your thing, this is, uh, you are very good, and they start to appreciate us. So then we feel, myself is a very nice thing. So then more we start to appreciate ourselves, more the self we start to get rooted. So this, and also more we admire ourselves, the mana arrogance starts to arise. So, Aloba, Aloba Dosa Moha makes these unwholesome states to become very stable in particular objects and ob uh, actions. On the other hand, mentalities such as Sata, Sati, Hiri, Ottapa become well established in the mind with the support of Aloba, Adosa, and Amoha. I think I explained it in detail. Moreover, so many mentalities with intentional effort. Now we come into Kusala. Now there are Sobana and Kusala. Akusala. Now the Sobana mentalities with intentional effort which arise in the mental stream in which latent delusion is not uprooted. It means the Sobana mentalities which arise as Javana Chittas in a mind stream of a non-arahat. Non because delusion is not uprooted and not all Sobana which arise as Javana. So the, how do we explain Javana? With intentional effort. They are intentional, if you remember your consciousness lesson, you mentioned intentional effort in, Effort is found in three types of chittas. Akusala chitta, kusala chitta and kiriya chitta. Vipaka chitta doesn't have this intentional effort. Among these chittas, panchadwara vajana, manodwara vajana has less intentional effort because they are supported by a vipaka santana. Before them is a vipaka chitta. So their intentional effort is quite weaker. So intentional effort, but kriya, vipaka is forced by the past kamas. So their force is belong to the past. They don't have that forceful nature within them. So this is, uh, so with intentional effort, so here what I want to say is sobana chittas with intentional efforts, but I want to refer, I, do, I exclude the avajana, two avajana chittas here, which arise in the mental stream in which delusion is not uprooted. It means a non-arahant. So javana chittas of a non-arahant, what happened, becomes capable in producing results in future. So that is the reason. Main reasons are the tanha and also the avijja. Both are the reasons for this. Both are the reasons for this chitta to produce results in future. So this sobana javana chittas, which happen in the non arahan stream, become kusala, capable of giving results in future. So a sobana chitta to become kusala chitta, a fundamental necessity is the latent moha, Upro not not uprooted moha. So when the moha is uprooted, that same sobana chitta which became kusala will act as an kiri. So therefore, moha is the fundamental, because therefore in bold letters, moha is the, you have to add, the latent moha, not all moha, latent, anusaya, right, latent moha, is the fundamental reason for when times become kusala. Here, the, one should understand the difference between sobana mentalities and kusala mentalities. I also mentioned it. Sobana mentalities are the mental realities that are the purity, uh, they are threefold purity of mind, sabda, force which does not let mind stream to go into wholesomeness, and remaining mentalities which are connected with sabda and sati. Among the sobana mentalities, only the mental realities which can produce pleasant, pleasant results in future are called kusala. Mentalities which are other than Kusala and Akusala are called Abhyakata, which will not yield any results in future. Hence, Moha is the fundamental cause for mentalities to become Akusala. Sadda is the main reason for mentalities to become Sobana. And latent Moha, this one, latent Moha is the rudimentary reason for some Akusala, some Sobana realities to become Kusala. So this is what I mentioned. Moha and Sadda related to Akusala, Sobana and Kusala. Right? Asula, Sobana and Kusala. Then to conclude the lecture, there are two other Mulas, Vatta Mula and Vivatta Mula. Two Vatta Mulas, Moha and Loba. Moha which is also Avijja and Loba which is also called Tanha are the roots, it means main reasons for the continuation of the suffering of Sansara. So they are called Vatta Mula. Dosa, which is an evil root, is an outcome of loba, is a result of loba. When we have loba, 
we have we get dosa right then vivarta mula amoha is also which is also called avijja and aloba which is also called nikkamadatu nikkamadatu are the roots it means main reasons for the attainment of spiritual uh, spirit supra mundane realities magapala and nibbana so they are, they are called vivarta mula adosa which is a whole uh, which is a wholesome root is an outcome of aloba more you don't have, we are detached we are non hating us right so these are the main reasons so in this lecture we discuss about some profound points like the sadda the basic attributes of sadda and why sadda is not a root even though it is a fundamental reason for kusala why it is not, it is not a root and relationship of moha uh and sadda and also we discuss about relationship of moha and sadda with akusala sobana and kusala dhammas we discuss in detail about with uh, some uh, fundamental mental attributes uh, then vartamula and vivartamula so i conclude the lecture with this so today we concluded uh, mula and tomorrow i'll be discussing about the part 2 of mentalities it will be only two lectures because of the time i'll be discussing about points about subjective experience and also some uh, how to understand about uh, uh, when the mentalities are mixed together how to understand them in detail and also some uh, important points and we will we'll conclude the mentalities from tomorrow if you have any questions yes so um, i just got confused that um, how about non buddhist uh, faith Uh, don't you go uh, they are uh, they don't they have sada and yeah so when we say non buddhist faith give me an example like believe in a god creation or something like that yes so in such cases thank you for your question it's like uh, if the non buddhist faith there are two types of non buddhist faith non buddhist some non buddhist believe in karma and is results right so this non buddhist faith is ba- if it is basically type of faith we call it is actual faith but if it is something like god creation right this is something which is against the reality according to us so we call it miccha adimukha you remember chetasika called adimukha right adimukha determination right so this adimukha which arise in dittigata sampayukta chittas because when they believe in the god it is a wrong will so it is the sampayukta chitta so this adimukha which believes in the god is the sadda according to us so this is so even in kusala chitta we have this adimukha when the sadda become very strong we call it comes to the level of adimukha right but in the in their faith if it is a complete wrong doctrine it is nicha adimukha but if it is still as yes, non buddhist if it is something about karma and its result we call it sadhast no perfectly but like uh, yeah karma and result like you do good things you will be born in a good place it, this is still sadha okay. i see like some uh religious person uh, who is not buddhist mm. and uh, but like believe in some what for example christian christianity but like uh, I feel they are kind of good. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Good kind of people. Yeah, people. sure, sure. That's that's for sure. But um, I don't know. I mean, I was a little confused that. Um, but you don't call they they have sada in it or. Yeah, that's why it's like when you are talking about the religious doctrine, which is a controversy with our doctrine. so our tradition would explain if it is something against the actual phenomenon actual phenomenon is nama rupa exists kama vipaka exists if it's talking about a uh, divine creation which is something completely against the doctrine so in in that case we say they don't have sat- that is wrong right but that's why i say even for a person who doesn't have the sadda of kama and vipaka still lots of wholesome qualities can appear in them so that is at that moment we call sadha is the purity of their mind clarity of their mind so such a person may give dana such a person may help others support his parents good do uh, have uh, uh, protect morality abstain from evil so these good qualities are surely in them 
So in, in all, any religion you find. So at that time when they are protecting, following these good qualities, their mind is pure, it's wholesome. So that, at that moment there is sadda. But that sadda is not regarding a belief. It is regarding the clarity of the mind. Pasadasa. Okay then, so yeah, we'll meet tomorrow.